Neutrinos weren't supposed to be this way. They should be massless ghost particles that never interact. But we know they do interact, although rarely, and they do have mass. Now, 60 years after they were first proposed, neutrino masses are still a mystery to scientists. Why do neutrinos have mass? And why don't they fit in with the pattern of other particles? That's what we're talking about today on Even Bananas. In the standard model of particle physics, neutrinos are massless. But we know they can't actually be massless because of neutrino oscillations. If you need a refresher, check out our neutrino oscillation video here. It's important to remember two points. First, while neutrinos have both flavor states and mass states, only the mass states have one-to-one -one corresponding masses. The masses of the flavor states are combinations of the mass states. I know that can be a weird concept. Second, we still don't know what the masses are for each mass state, but we know that they exist. Basically, if you calculate the probability that a neutrino will change from one flavor to another, you find that the probability depends on the value delta m squared, the difference in squared masses between two neutrino mass states. Let's pretend neutrinos didn't have mass. Then zero minus zero would give us zero, and we'd never see neutrinos change flavor. The fact that we do see neutrinos oscillate means that neutrinos must have mass. Measurements of neutrino oscillations can tell us the size of delta m squared. However, that doesn't tell us which neutrino is heavier or lighter, a problem called the mass ordering. It also doesn't tell us what the masses of the neutrinos actually are. If we measure a delta m squared of 10, are we talking 1 and 11, or 5 million and 5 million and 10? Other measurements can tell us a bit more. Cosmologists compare measurements of the cosmic microwave background to models of how the universe evolved, including different amounts of total neutrino mass. Those measurements tell us that if you add up the masses of all the different types of neutrinos, the total mass should be less than 0.26 electron volts. A more direct measurement comes from an experiment called Catrin. Catrin measures the energies of electrons produced from the beta decay of an isotope of hydrogen called tritium. The maximum energy of the electrons can tell us how much energy went into making neutrinos, and hence their mass. It's an incredibly complicated measurement with a highly sensitive detector, but ultimately, the experiment says that the mass of a neutrino is less than about 0.8 electron volts. This brings us to our next problem. Both of these measurements are pointing towards neutrino masses that are at least 625,000 times smaller than the next lightest particle, the electron. Any way you look at it, neutrinos don't fit the pattern. So why are neutrino masses so different from all the other particles? To answer this, we first have to understand how particles get mass. To help us, I've brought in my friend Pedro Machado, a theoretical physicist from Fermilab. Hi, Pedro. One of the properties that particles can have, along with charge and flavor, is chirality or handedness. Particles can have components that are left-handed or right-handed. You may have heard of this in chemistry class or on your own hands. Fans of particle physics may recognize this concept from the Higgs boson discovery in 2012. The Higgs boson gives particles mass by breaking the symmetry that distinguishes left and right-handedness, the weak symmetry. Interactions with the Higgs boson combine left-handed and right-handed parts of the particle, which is what generates its mass. This is very deep particle physics, but the main thing to know is that it's very well defined and understood for most particles. But if you apply this mechanism to neutrinos, it gets a little bit tricky. Kind of by chance, the neutrino is special. As far as we know, neutrinos are only left-handed. They don't have a right-handed component. That opens up a lot more possibilities, theoretically. It means that while other particles get their mass through the Higgs, the way neutrinos get their masses could be different. Some people Hi. even say it should be different. Well. That is because the neutrino is different from the other particles. There is another possibility. 
We've talked about how neutrinos could be a fundamentally different type of particle called a Majorana fermion. The implications of that are super cool, so definitely check out that video if you haven't. Majorana particles get their mass in a different way. That's theoretically nice because it could explain why the neutrino masses are so much smaller than the other particles. If you close your eyes and pick out the simplest theory for how neutrinos get their mass, you get Majorana particles with a seesaw mechanism. This seesaw mechanism says that you have two particles, a left-handed neutrino and a right-handed neutrino. The right-handed neutrino never interacts, and that's why we wouldn't have seen it yet. Mathematically, if you raise the mass of the right-handed guy, the left-handed mass goes down, like a seesaw. The reason the neutrino masses we know about are so light could be because there is a really heavy right-handed neutrino that we just don't know about it yet. We should give a caveat, though. We have no data to guide the theory, so it's kind of a Pandora's box. Once you start inventing new particles that you can't detect, why is your new invisible particle better than mine? Why invent a right-handed neutrino rather than a special neutrino-specific Higgs particle? In some sense, neutrino masses should be a field as broad as dark matter. We know it's there, but there's a hundred theories to explain neutrino masses and no way to test them with data yet. Yep. Often when people say hundreds of theories, they usually mean like five. But in this case, there are really over a hundred theories that could actually work. Neutrinos are different because they all interact via the weak force. Right-handed neutrinos could exist and would have no interactions at all. That's when all hell breaks loose, theoretically speaking. So there you have it. Neutrino masses are a mystery that have been going on since neutrinos were discovered, and it doesn't seem like we'll solve it anytime soon. We still don't know the mass of each neutrino mass state, how the mass states are ordered, or even how the neutrinos get their mass. That's what makes neutrino physics so much fun. Which theory for explaining how neutrinos get their mass do you like the best? Let us know in the comments. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe to hear more about these confusing particles. Fun fact! The Katrin experiment spectrometer is so big, it couldn't do the 350km trip from where it was built to the lab by land. Instead, it was shipped 8,600km by water down the Danube River in Europe to the Black Sea, through the Mediterranean Sea and the Atlantic Ocean and back up the Rhine to do a short seven kilometers by land. When you see the photos of it, it kind of makes sense. <laughs>